Welcome back to HealthBeat. I'm Mia Malani. We're looking at the quality of South Africa's tap water and its health implications. With me to discuss how well South Africa's water treatment plants work is Aisha Lahir. Aisha, thanks very much for joining us today. Many of South Africa's water treatment plants don't produce safe drinking water. Why is that? Uh, more than 50% do not produce safe water. Um, most of them, it's due to a lack of routine maintenance, um, a lack of investment in infrastructure. They don't have effective operations or management. And we end up with unsafe water that gets into the taps. So are there any plants that do work well and where are they? Um, I'm always proud to say that in Gauteng, we have the rainwater is the water board that supplies water to the entire Gauteng and other outlying areas. They are actually a very good water board. They're world-class water board and produce water of exceptional quality. Um, so if you live in Gauteng, you have no you have no problems whatsoever. So Gauteng is safe. We can be happy with the water. But Mpumalanga seems to be a province of concern. So there's a number of provinces where the water quality is quite bad. Um, so Northwest is, uh, is a province as well. Mpumalanga, parts of Free State, uh, Northern Cape, um, are actually quite poor performing with regards to microbiological compliance. So that means the water that is coming out of the tap has the potential to make you sick. There also seems to be a big issue in the free state with wastewater, so the water going out of our homes. Why does that water need to be cleaned? It, it should be treated because remember water is a finite resource and we need to protect it as well and use it effectively. All over the world we take our wastewater, we put it back into wastewater treatment works. Beautiful systems, biological systems mostly, treat the wastewater to a limit that it can be released into the river and reused again safely. Um, so these wastewater plants are part of that water cycle. So they're released back into the river, they can be abstracted again by the water treatment works and purified further so we can drink it. So we need to have that water safely treated. Who checks that the testing is done? The Department of Water and Sanitation is under the National Water Act. They are the regulator and they're the custodian of water in South Africa. Um, so technically all the water in the country belongs to the Minister of Water Affairs. And uh, the de Department of Water and Sanitation will monitor the water. Um, so in the regulations, um, every municipality that is a water service provider authority, so they are responsible for treating the water and treating the sewage. They are required to monitor on a monthly basis their water and wastewater against certain limits and standards and provide that information to the Department of Water and Sanitation to check if they are compliant or not. If the tests show that they're not compliant, whose job is it to intervene? The Department of Water and Sanitation's job. And how often do they intervene? Recently, there have been quite a bit of, there have been interventions. Um, I can comment now on what happened on the, in the Green Drop report. So the Green Drop audits were conducted by the department in 2021. It was a full Green Drop audit. And they found a number of municipalities are not working well. They, 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 they identified more than 200 plants that are really in a critical risk category. They're really bad. Um, so they issued them, they placed them under regulatory supervision um, and told them we want a corrective action plan, which they were supposed to give. Uh, but what's said is that a, a majority, more than 60%, didn't even bother to submit corrective action plans. Uh, and that is sad because, you know, the affluent they're producing has got a direct effect on, on, on human beings' lives, on, on the environment. So it, it is quite a risk. How do I know that the water coming out of my tap is safe? So is there a way to know a home test that you can do? How would you know? Um, there's a test that you can do for yourself. You don't need any training. Um, it's a very simple uh, dip, uh, a strip that you put into the water and it would tell you whether the water is safe or not. And if you then find that your water isn't clean, what can you do to clean it? Okay, so if you have microbiological contaminants, that means there's stuff growing in the water, there's bacteria or whatever, um, the, mo the, the quickest thing that you can do is you can boil the water. Uh, so boiling is going to kill all your pathogens and you will be sure that there is no pathogens in the water. Alternatively, if you, don't have, if you can't boil the water, then you can also add household bleach. Um, so in a litre of water, you can put two teaspoons of bleach, normal household bleach, 
Leave it for about half an hour so that it takes action and then you can safely drink the waters. With municipalities increasingly not providing water for houses or homes, let alone clean water, we have many people having Jojo tanks. So a lot of people, like you say, are putting Jojo tanks. So all well and good, you can store municipal water that has already been cleaned, but you must make sure that the water doesn't stain for a long time. Uh, because if the water stains for a long time, there can be pathogens that start growing in there. Um, so ideally, uh, what I tell most people is there is a UV light that you can install. And the UV light will last for about two to three years and kill all pathogens that are in the water. So a so very good option for that. Alternatively, you can also put chlorine, but then you need to measure how much chlorine and there mustn't be too much or too little. Rainwater is quite dangerous. Because remember, if you get catching rainwater from your, from your roof, the chance that the, the roof is dirty and bird droppings are always on your roof. So either you have to treat that water or you can use it for things like washing uh, your car or, or, or whatever else. And what about borehole water? Does that need cleaning or can you just, if you have a borehole, drink the water? Um, so groundwater has always been very good quality because it's stored in the earth, it filtered through the sand, had time to sit and wait there for millions of years and we're drinking beautiful water. However, in recent days, Depending on the amount of human activity there is, there can be an infiltration of pathogens, any kinds of things, fertilizers, um, uh, acid mine drainage, whatever, into, into the groundwater, and you have a potential for having unsafe water. Um, so it is important to, when you drill the ball, to test the water, send that water to a laboratory to test for all the determinants that are in the standard so that you can be sure that water is safe. If it is safe and there's nothing funny in there, then great, you can drink that water, store it in your Jojo tank, put some kind of uh, disinfectant in there for your safeguard and drink the water. Aisha Laher, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, appreciate it. That's our show. We hope you're more water-wise. Until next time, goodbye.